G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. I've got a brand new project for you, of course, but before we get to there, I just want to give a great big shout out to my beautiful granddaughter who's been very creative, started her own earring making little business. She's made me Mickey and Minnie earrings for today's video. Not that we're making a mouse today, and you're never too old for Mickey, are you? Well, he's older than me, so there you go. But I think they're lovely, just my type of thing. So big kiss, thank you Imogen for those. So I've got very creative children and grandchildren. It's lovely to be surrounded by that. Have you got creative people in your family aside from you? Um, let me know in the comments. It's lovely to be surrounded by all of that and we can all um, encourage each other. So today's project, I have a beautiful uh, addition to my Sherpa collection, my Snuggle collection, and this is a beautiful little Snuggle sheep. And he's made partly in Sherpa and partly in fabrics. I've used a heavier weight wool fab fabric for this one. It's all in keeping with the whole project. Remember that this collection is all about it being simple, easy to put together and very, very child friendly. So um, I've added a little scarf at the end. It's all very soft and it is great for cuddling. I love to think of this one as being a bedtime pal. Um, and I think he's really sweet. I've styled him on Sean the Sheep. Does anybody else love the show Sean the Sheep? Maybe you don't have it where you are, but um, it's a very cute little, very, very animated sheep. So I've got your free pattern already for you and it is in the description box below. To find that, you've got a little grey arrow, arrow at the lower corner of your screen. Click on that, it'll, you'll see a drop down description box and it will have your pattern link in there. All you need to do is print out those pattern templates I have there for you and do print them out. See your printer to be printing at actual size or perhaps to A4, but use your measuring bar that I've provided for you on those pattern templates to make sure your patterns are printing out right. Printers do vary the world over. Always message me in the comments if you have any problems with that and we'll try and help you along with that. But once you've got them printed out, you can get that sorted. You'll, we will run through materials and requirements in a minute. Um, and you'll be ready to go. I always include all seam allowances within my patterns. This one has a five millimeter seam allowance used throughout. So who's ready to make my cuddly little snuggly sheep? So let's run through everything that we're going to need to put together our little snuggle sheep. Um, now, this Sherpa collection that I have, the intention with this collection, of course, is that most of what I make are collectibles. So with this Sherpa collection, I want them to be snuggle buddies. I want them to be a toy that be, can be hugged and loved and is quite child friendly. So um, that's why I'm using the Sherpa. Now you may have seen my blue Sherpa bear, my snuggle bear. Now in there, I give you uh, the information about using some PVA glue and water as a mix to make up a mixture which I do in a separate container it is two parts water to one part glue and mix that all up and you paint that on the back of your Sherpa fabric or your acrylic fabric which just gives it a nice bond it stops this Sherpa knit back fabric from stretching now have a look at how I've done that on the uh, blue bear video because I run through it all. I don't want to run through it all again It's just going to make this video too long But all it does basically is it stops your fabric from stretching and from fraying so you paint it on all of your openings um, Anywhere you're going to close an opening any tight little points and spots and certainly I do it all over the head pieces So we only have one bit of Sherpa on the head with this one and I'll be telling you throughout where I have added that PVA glue, glue as we go along. So let's start actually um, with our arm and leg pieces. So what I've done with this one, so this is, we'll start with the arms. This is a completed little arm. This is the other one here that I've yet to do. Very simply made up in a heavier weight fabric. So it's really nice to bring in a wool blend or something like that here. Now my sheep is a black sheep with that white coat. Um, of course you can make a natural colored sheep if you want. You might want to make a crazy purple or pink sheep, whatever you like. 
But do remember that it does work best if your the fur section, the body and the top of the head is lighter than the limbs and the, and the face itself. It just, it all looks better. It looks more realistic and so on. The balance of color is better that way. So I've got my nice dark um, limbs there and I've got uh, interfacing applied to that fabric and it is my fusible woven medium weight interfacing. That gives me strength and flexibility. So we want everything to still be quite soft and huggable and that interfacing allows me to do that. So you need your pieces ready for your arms and then for the legs, we have a piece that looks like this, which we're going to fold over and that becomes the leg. We're also going to be putting a simple little stitch across knee joint there so that he can sit and he's quite floppy and poseable. I have added a felt interfaced felt foot pad in black but you can you can go ahead and just use the same interfaced fabric to make that foot pad that's totally up to you that's how the black one looks when that's popped in so that's your arms and legs sorted and then let's move on to the body so the body is made up in the sherpa and we've got our body front now on the body front i've used that pva mixture on the base and across the top here. This is the, the side panels and on the side panels I've just added that PVA again at the base and just that top curve that will help me stitch that in and the base I've completely coated that in PVA so it's nice and strong and it's easy to sew in and then my back pieces of course with my back sections that's where we're going to have our opening that we have to close so I've coated that in the PVA as well as well as across the top and the bottom there so those are our body pieces we also have a little tail that we're going to add and I have simply just put some of that PVA across the opening so then we're going to move on to the head now the head pieces I've actually cut mine in black felt again I could have made the head in that same fabric but I really wanted that real black faced little sheep and I really wanted the very simple nose and mouth to show up. So I've gone for the black felt and just brought in some black accents throughout as I said with that foot pad and also I will with the inside of the ears. So we have two side head pieces and that is interfaced felt, same interfacing and then we have the front of the face, the front head gusset, which is joined to the Sherpa, which creates the back head gusset. So we get a nice little tuft of wool on the top of the head and that lovely little, um, I guess that's a, a little uh, sort of a punk style hairstyle, isn't it? Going down the back, a bit of a mullet happening there, but it's very cute. It ties it all in with the rest of the body there. So we're going to be sewing that together and it will create one piece. So those are our head pieces. It's very simple to put together and the arms and legs are sewn into the body. So there's no jointing with the arms and legs. The ears are sewn into the head seam. So there's no sewing ears on and those face details are super, super simple. There is one neck joint and that is a 40 millim neck. 40 millimeter neck joint. I'm just using my jointing system. I'm going to put a link up the top there for you for videos where I talk to you about alternative methods for jointing. Have a look at that. But that's a 40 millimeter one there ready. We are going to be needing those ears. Now the ears, what you need to do with the ears, I've taken my piece of black felt, there's no treatment on that at all, and my piece of my fabric to match the legs and arms no treatment on that either. I've put them together, right sides together, and I've drawn around my ear template because with this one, we're going to be just stitching right on that line and turning them through. It's much easier to do and you get a more even result. So that one is all ready too. Now for the eyes, what I'm going to be creating is a little hooded eye that I've got here. Now I'm using a glass 
14 millimeter glass teddy bear eye, a premium glass eye. I really wanted the green with this one. I'm going to give him a little green and brown scarf. So I thought the green would be lovely and go well for a sheep. Um, but of course, you can't use these eyes for very, very young children. You can definitely do this little hooded method that I'm going to show you and still use a safety eye because it's just that eye is tucked in to that little pocket there. It's just a great simple way to do. So we attach them differently, but safety eyes in about a 14 millimeter will fit this as well. Alternatively, you could use buttons if it's for a slightly older child. Um, you can just go ahead and use just uh, your glass teddy bear eyes on their own or safety eyes just on their own without this hooding. I just think that's a lovely little detail. So we'll be adding that in. So you will also need your extra strong threads, of course, to match your project. We will need some pearl thread to sew that nose and mouth section. I'm going for this nice dusky pink because it will show up on the black really well and it will add a third color, which will be nice. Um, we will be filling with polyester filling and I may add a little bit of weight in the base of the body but you don't have to do that if you want it super snugly um, it will sit up just fine without that um, and that's about it so let's get started by we have to start by making our arms and legs because they are put into the body sewn into the body so let's start with our arms so you can see that completed arm there very very simple all we need to do is put right sides together and you're just going to, I will sew on my machine with a, a stitch length of number two. I'm using a jeans needle and I'm going to stitch a five millimeter this time, a five millimeter seam allowance for this whole project right the way around up to the top. We leave this top end open and I do sew that seam two times, one right over top of the other, just for strength for when we go to stuff it. So let's get that one sewn up. You can go ahead and turn that one through once you've stitched that up and do make sure that you get in there and push out all of those seams well and always roll out all of your seams so we get a lovely rounded finish. It's very important to have that beautiful finish. So now we're just going to fill that arm. Now they are going to be attached at the top of the shoulder into the body. Just thinking about that body section too, where I'm using the Sherpa, so the nice woolly section of the body, you could use a polar fleece there if you wanted to, but of course you won't get that real lovely lift of pile that gives that woolly full look, but certainly a good thick polar fleece would be a good substitute if that's all you can find. Um, if you are using polar fleece, you won't need to interface it or don't use the PVA treatment on um, polar fleece. It will not work. So just bear that in mind. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to fill the lower part of this arm I'm going to pack this hand down here quite firm. I want a certain amount of weight and then up the top section of the arm, I leave that quite soft and the very top section, I don't put any filling in at all. So you can see here, this section here, there's nothing in there at all. Cause when I add it to the body and stitch it in, I actually want that arm to drop. If it's stuffed full, it'll sit out and I want it to really sit nice and tight in it, his sides. Um, so we leave this section quite empty. This section is packed very soft, you can see, and then we get to the hand and that's packed very firm. So just up to above the wrist. So get that one filled out and once you've done that, simply put those edges together and do a quick tacking stitch on the machine to close the top of that arm. So that completes those arms. Whatever, however you fill those arms, just make sure that they're both the same. So we can put those aside and now we can go ahead and make the legs. So this is my first little leg all made up and you've got your pattern piece that looks like this. 
we need to just fold that one in half and you can take your pins or clips whatever you prefer and we're just going to line up that front edge all the way down to the toe right down to the base there make sure everything's well lined up and then just as we did with the arm with a five millimeter seam allowance we're going to stitch from the top there all the way down to the toe we leave the foot section open for our foot pad and this top section open for our turning through and filling so do make sure that you back and forth on your start and finish and that you sew that seam two times one time straight over the top of the other for strength our next step is to add our foot pad so what we're going to do is open up that front toe seam and press that nice and flat because we're going to take our foot pad and we're going to put a pin through our center mark at the front at our five millimeter seam allowance then we're going to put that pin through that seam right through the center at that same five millimeter seam allowance right through the front there and push that pin head all the way down now we're going to do the same thing at the back where you should have your mark on your foot pad and also you should have a mark at the center back of your leg that one goes pushed in all the way down as well so next we just have to start fitting this foot pad in to your opening there so the way I do that is line up those two edges I put my pin through all the layers flip it over and take up just a little bit of fabric on the other side push my pin head all the way down that clamps that into place and then we're going to do the same moving across to the other side so that we're putting it in nice and even again take that pin through all of the layers flip it over and take a little bit up on that other side and push that pin head all the way down making sure all the time this is staying nice and central now we'll move to the back and we're going to do the same thing there now these foot pads will fit in beautifully so long as you followed your seam allowance well everything's made to fit well so you need to take your pin again through all the layers little bit on the other side and that clamps that all down into place making sure that's centered and all you need to do is pin the rest in right the way around either side you can see how well that fits in so my next step is to take my needle and extra strong thread and I'm just going to sew a tacking overcasting stitch around that whole foot pad just so that I can remove all my pins so this is how your foot pad should look when it's just overcast into place there now we're going to actually sew the seam you can do this two ways you can actually sew just the top section and the lower section which is quite curved and really too curved to get under the machine so you can just do those two sections by hand and then take it to the machine and join it up on the sides I don't mind sewing in foot pads so I'm happy to sew the whole thing in by hand and I get a much better result I seem just seem to have more control over those curves so I'm going to sew this with a stab back stitch which is a hand stitch we use for all of our soft sculpture it's the strongest stitch of all it's a single strand of extra strong thread with a knot in the end and I'm going to come in at my seam allowance the first thing I'm going to do is just make two stitches one on top of the other just to anchor that in as our starting point and now we can go ahead and start our seam we come from the underneath and we're just traveling the length of a stitch from the underneath then we're going back into that hole that we just came out of pulling that one nice and tight coming from the underneath again keep those stitches nice and small and even back into that hole we just came out of 
we do this each time so that the stitch is completely linked back and front that's what makes it so strong so always coming up and backtracking back into that hole and you can see it's a beautiful seam line that you can get much much straighter and more accurate than any machine line on this sort of uh, pattern shape so I'm just going to continue on right the way around I do have a video that shows you how to do this stitch up close on uh, and I will put that link up the top there for you for you to have a look at that if you need some more help with that you can go ahead and turn that leg through make sure you push out all those seams again you can see that lovely balanced little foot pad there so the next thing we need to do is take that center seam line it up with the center back there and you want to take your pattern piece you can see on your pattern piece for your leg you've got a mark there that's the line that we stitch to create that little knee so I just pop a pin in there so that I know where I have to fill to. So as we did with the arms, I pack the foot section really full and really firm so that it's got some weight. So for the same reason, it's got a nice bit of drop. It's nice and floppy and poseable. So we need to add all of the weight and all of the bulk here at the base. And you want to soften off as you go up. To where we're going to stitch across there for two reasons so that it drops nicely like that and also so that we can get that under the machine and stitch across there which we will do once we have filled that foot so again just get in there with your forceps or your stuffing tool whatever you have and we're just going to fill that foot make sure as you're filling up that foot at the front there that you're really supporting that at the front don't be pushing those forceps all the way through and remember when you're filling you're not just filling up a hole you're creating a shape so you need to be mindful of the shape that you're trying to create and where you place that stuffing so get that lower leg section filled nice and packed firm here less here and then make sure that you can get that folded down and then all you need to do is take that to the machine and just stitch straight across where that pin is through all of the layers. Make sure it's nice and straight because that's your knee bend and sew that two times. Okay, so there you can see I've stitched across there just the same as the other one and we're going to have nice equal little knees there and it's so very important that you don't have filling here or you won't get that lovely knee drop so now what we do is we're going to fill the top section and this section to that knee joint is where we pack it nice and firm so that's going to give us some volume in the knee and help create that nice leg shape so I really really pack that in but again the top section we've got to sew into the seam of the base of our body so we don't want any filling right at the very top here but I actually pack that filling in I take my wool felting needle to really pack it in so that it stays right here so now you can see you'll get some nice volume to the top of the knee here and then it will drop away naturally into the leg just because of how we've placed the stuffing so compare it to this one it's nice and firm packed here and then we go in to nothing there and we still get that nice little drop of the knee so pack that one in and then you just need to take it back to the machine line up that straight across and just stitch across to seal that end off that completes those legs and we can now put those aside and we need to move on and we have to create our tail because that also gets sewn into a seam on the body so the first thing I have done you might notice there at the top of each of those pieces I've trimmed away that pile the Sherpa pile so that it's easier for us to pop it into the seam you see I've taken it right back to the backing fabric 
and now what we need to do is put right sides together and we're going to line up those edges. When you're working with Sherpa, you do need to tuck that pile in as you go. You see how I've just curled it in there? And that's nicely caught up. I'm going to pin that all the way around, tucking that fur in as I go, make sure that it's all lined up there. Then I'm going to overcast. Now when I'm working with Sherpa, because it's so thick, it can move and you want to have it exactly where you need it. So I will take my needle and my extra strong thread and I will overcast that seam first so I can remove all my pins. Then I'm just going to stitch that tail all the way around, leaving that top section open. And again, I will make sure that I back and forth on the start and finish. You don't have to sew the tail two times because we are not putting any stuffing in that. So I've now turned that through and we don't add any filling this one or it will get too bulky and I've gone ahead and I've just stitched across to close that opening. Makes it easier for us to add it to the back pieces. So that is our next step. So you have a mark on your pattern piece that shows you where the, the edge of that tail needs to sit because we need enough room left over there to be able to sew in that base. So all I do is just tack that into place. So we've got right sides together and we're going to incorporate it into that seam. So just a tacking stitch will hold it in place. You could do that on the machine if you wish. Um, it, it will end up with four layers that we're sewing through, but it's fairly easy to get your needle through. So I'm just going to get that one stitched into place. So now that's nicely incorporated into the seam there, we put our back pieces together and we're going to start from that top there, tucking in that pile. And pinning down, tucking that fur to that start of that opening, match up those marks so that you're getting that right. And of course your opening should have your PVA mixture on it so that it won't fray away or stretch. And then pin from the lower opening. Lining up those marks. And then we're going to pin right down to that bottom edge, incorporating that tail into the seam. So if you just line up the bottom pieces first, and of course tucking in that fur around that tail section there. So the sections we're going to be sewing, of course I'm going to overcast it first, are from the neck to that top of that opening. Make sure that when you go to stitch them that you back and forth on those openings because that's going to take a fair bit of pulling through and it needs to be nice and strong. We will also stitch from the lower opening down to the base there and sew those securely two times. So that has our centre seam stitched and that tail incorporated into that centre seam. Turn that one out, make sure you roll out all those seams and you can go through that seam and just lift out gently any of the pile that's trapped in there. Just be gentle with it because it is a very porous fabric and we don't want to be making it go all fuzzy. So it's just gently lifting it out from those seams. So then we can pop that one aside and we're going to go ahead. We need to add the arms to our side panels before we put the body together. So they will also be incorporated into the seams. The way that we do that is we've got a mark at the top of each of your side panels, as you can see there. And we're just going to sew the arms on the right side and make sure that you've got the arms mirrored so that when we put this body together the arms are going the right way. 
So you've got the center mark on the top of your pattern piece of the arm as well and you just want to line those up and I just stitch it into place just hand stitch it into place with my extra strong thread my overcasting stitch just like that so that's held into place before we go on to the next step so there we now have our two side panels with those arms ready in place we're going to take our front body piece and our bo back body piece and we're going to put them together at the front here at the top of the neck just going to open up my tacking stitch there on that center back seam so that I can open that out flat and then we're just going to line up the center back seam with the center mark just drop a pin through there straight through that center seam then we're going to line up that top section on each side and we're going to sew this top seam here across here what I like to do though is to stop just a few millimeters before that center mark and not start again till a few centimeters after it so it leaves a little space and that little space is for our neck joint to go through it's just easier to stitch either side rather than having to poke a hole in it afterwards so I'm just going to overcast both sides and then stitch again on the machine two times remembering that five millimeter seam allowance so there you can see that front section stitched across the top there to the back section so now we're going to turn that one back through and we're going to add our side panels with our the, with the arms already attached now make sure when you're putting these in that you're putting them in the right way with the arms facing towards the front so this is your back with back opening so that arm is facing towards the front we're going to start I've opened up that top seam by removing my tacking stitch on the shoulder and now I'm going to just line up that center mark as we've done before straight through all of those layers and straight through that center seam now we're just going to tuck that fur and just follow that line down now there's quite a few layers there with that arm going through but again it's all quite soft you want to make sure that the top of that arm is going to be fully incorporated in that seam so just tucking as I go going from side to side much like I did the paw pad And I'm going to match that up on each side right the way down line it up perfectly with the base I'm going to get that pinned into place and then I'm going to overcast that section into place also and here's how your side panel should look when you've just overcast that into place and of course that arm is there nicely incorporated into that seam and you do want to make absolutely certain that you've caught every corner of that arm so what I'm going to do now is I've taken my extra strong thread and I'm going to just sew the same stab back stitch that we used to sew in the foot pad I'm just going to sew that top curve into place 
that way I'm making absolutely sure that I'm getting a nice neat curve and also that that arm is well incorporated and then from there you can link up and sew the rest of those seams sewing them two times on the machine so now I have both of those side panels stitched in and we can actually just turn that through and we should have nice secure shoulder seams there and a beautiful fall to those arms and you can see it's just a gorgeous way to insert arms without having to use joints with a very natural look so you can see they're ready to go so we can actually pop that back through because we're going to have to add the legs and the base section so we need to add the legs to the base section before we pop in that uh, the bottom there so on your pattern on your template your front template You've got marks there at the front and that indicates where the legs start so the positioning of the legs this is our front your legs need to go in need to be stitched in right sides together with the toes pointing away from you so that when we turn that all through the leg is going to sit out from the front so I'm just going to pin it into place lining up with that mark go straight across that seam there and I'm going to tack it into place just with my overcasting stitch I'm going to tack that one into place and then I'm going to do exactly the same with right sides together starting at the other mark and tack that one into place then we're going to tuck those legs in now you might also notice that I've taken the arms now and I've popped them through the back opening it just gives you more room inside here so they're tucked through and they're out of the way so I'm just going to tack both of those legs into place remember toes pointing forwards and now that I've got both those legs stitched into place at those marks there leaving a space in between the legs I've gone ahead now and I've tucked the legs into the body and out through that opening as well it's a bit of a squash but they're nice and squashy so it all works out fine so make sure they're pulled out enough that you're going to be able to add this base now you've got your front the front is the flatter side and you've got a mark at the front and you want to line that up with your center front which is right in the middle there and we're going to put a pin through there straight through there and then you want to line up the back with the center back which is back here I'm going to take out a couple of those tacking stitches again just so that I can open out that seam just so I can flatten that seam and get right in there take my pin through that center mark and again through straight through that center back seam at the seam allowance all the way through and then we're just going to do just as we did with the foot pad and fit that base in it's easy to manage if you've put the PVA mix on that base because then it's not collapsing in on itself it's easier to tuck those edges in you 
you'll find it will fit perfectly if you've kept all your seam allowances. And I'm going to get that pinned into place and then I'm going to overcast it and I'll show you how that looks. So there is that base and it's been pinned in and just overcast in place. You can see how perfectly that fits. Now that's quite a big section, although you've got some very thick areas here that you're going to have to stitch through. If you can tuck that under the machine, you can certainly sew that in on the machine and do make sure you sew it two times. You also have to be very aware of capturing those legs into that seam right to the corners and go over those a couple of times if you're sewing it on the machine alternatively you can go ahead and you could just sew it all in by hand with that stab back stitch so once you have that base sewn in of course you can just pull all of those legs through that back opening to turn everything through and we have our beautiful completed little snuggle sheet body so cute so now we can pop that one aside and he needs his head so we can just go ahead with that one what we're going to start with is the ears because again just to make things easier the ears are being incorporated into the head seam so no sewing ears on you can thank me later <laughs> i thank myself um so what, what, what I've done there is I've got my plain felt and my plain piece of fabric. So no interfacing applied to those. You can use any fabrics you like for this. I just wanted to bring that very black in again. And it's going to be in the center of the ear and this will be the outer. Pin them right sides together and I've drawn around mine. I've used a white marker because of it being black. And I'm just going to stitch right on that line all the way around I just need to make sure I back and forth on the start and finish with a very small stitch and then I will show you how we cut those out and turn them through so this has my ears all nicely stitched around that uh, lower edge leaving this open so what I'm going to do now is cut straight across that line on that open edge and just leave your normal around about a four millimeter seam allowance all the way around that ear It's just much easier doing it this way if you it's easier than pinning at all it's definitely a quicker result and it's actually way more accurate than pinning two separate pieces now we just need to turn that one through the reason for not interfacing these pieces is because we want these ears to be nice and soft we don't want them sticking out, we want them to sit and droop down. So now I'm just going to roll those seams out and I will take that to my iron and give that a good press so it's nice and flat. Then I'm just going to fold it in half just like this. Inwards, the inside of your ear is the part that you fold inwards. I want this very dark black showing next to that face and then you just stitch across and then they're ready to be added to our head pieces to be sewn in the joys of a sewn in ear so now our next step after we've done that we're going to move on and we're going to prepare our head gusset now this uh, is a crucial part of the front of your head this is where that little top knot is going to sit and putting this one together might seem a little odd because we're going to be sewing a curve to a curve but it's actually easier than you think and the pattern is well designed so it's all going to fit beautifully now of course you've transferred all of your marks so on your back head gusset which is your fleecy part you've got a mark and you also on your front section we're going to line up that mark that's the first thing we're going to do making sure that fur is all tucked and we're going to put a pin straight through the center there and then we're going to line up the other side I might actually take that pin through and clamp it in on the other side there we go so that's going to hold that well and we just need to line up the rest 
either side. So they do come together because they're the same curve. That one will match up there. Go to the other side and do the same thing. So now what I'm going to do is just overcast that section into place because it is a curve and you do need to do that first or you're never going to get it to be that lovely shape. So that is just as simple as taking your extra strong thread, making sure you've lined up those corners. And just tack that into place. Making sure those edges are even and that centre mark stays beautifully centred. So once you have that tacked into place, you can go ahead and you can, can take this one to the machine and stitch that in place two times if you like with that same seam allowance of five millimeters or you can stitch it with your stab back stitch it's not very it's not a very long seam so that's probably what I'll do and I'll get a nice even curve so that has my completed head gusset with that nice little curve at the front there and now the next step if you if you want to sew the very simple nose and mouth in that I have on mine and it, do, it is very much in keeping with the very animated style of this project and it's very easy to do. I've actually given you on your template, you've got little marks that you can line up and make those marks on your front head gusset there. Now because I'm working with black felt and I'm going to be sewing the nose and mouth in in a pink pearl thread, I'm just using a normal polychromo pencil and I've gone ahead and made marks at each of those spots so I know exactly where my needle's going to go and you can you probably can't see it but it is on there so long as I can see it that's all that matters you need to be careful of using something either that is water erasable or heat erasable that you can remove afterwards because you don't want to be seeing those spots you may not be making a black faced sheep um, so it may be different for you but they're nicely in place now I don't have to worry about getting it nice and straight so the next step is we've got that completed head gusset now we're going to add the ears to our side head pieces so you can see how I've done that there you've got marks on your pattern templates that you want to line up and that's where the ear starts so here's where our little ear gets stitched into place so that it's going to be incorporated in that seam when we add that head gusset it makes it a whole lot easier so the ear starts on that mark and also you have to make sure of course that that ear is facing forwards towards the muzzle so stitch that one in place just like I have this one and that's there just tacked in place on the machine and then we're ready to start pinning in our head gusset so we take our, one of our side head pieces with that ear attached and this is the neck section, this is the neck section at the front and we're going to line up those two here. Now I'm working on the centre head gusset. Always do all of your work, pinning and sewing on the centre head gusset. You'll find it much easier. All I'm going to do is bring those edges together it's a tight curve at the front there but you'll find it will happily go around it. This head gusset fits in beautifully again if you've kept to all of your seam allowances and we're just going to follow those curves. You'll notice I'm pinning in that 3D fashion again. It just makes it so much easier. And this is a, a gusset that goes all the way around down to the back of the head. But 
we come up to here just tuck that pile backwards and then of course we move into that pile section just be sure that that's all lined up you'll also find you've got marks on your center head gusset there and you'll notice that they will line up with where the ear starts so that's going to help you make sure that it's the same on either side so that those that head gusset is going in evenly and we won't have one ear sitting back or too forward so now I'm covering where that ear will be joined in and then I'll just continue down right down to the back of the neck so that's our side head gusset pinned into place I will then go ahead and overcast that still working on the center gusset and then that one can you can take that to the machine sometimes I'll hand stitch over that ear section just because it's a lot of layers and uh, my machine might complain a little going through all of that um, but just make sure that you've sewn that in two times and those the section where that ear is that it's nice and strong and uh, you've reinforced at the start and finish now I've gone ahead and added both of those side head pieces in exactly the same way working on that head gusset the whole time so now we can just turn that one through and we should see those little ears pop out with a nice flop down at the side situation once we get that filled and you can see we've got that lovely front and that lovely rounded face there so you want to go ahead and roll out all of those seams especially on that ear area and right down the back on both sides and that has a beautiful little sheep's face there so now most of you will be using safety eyes because that is the whole purpose of this collection the Sherpa collection is that they are made to be kid safe so I'm assuming you're going to be using safety eyes in some form. Um, if not, of course, you can add buttons and so on. Now I'm going to be using, I would be using safety eyes if I had them, but I don't, and I've only got the teddy bear glass eyes. So I'm going to be using those. But these safety eyes in a 14 millimeter or even a 12 millimeter can still use this eyelid pocket. So what I've done is I have cut the eyelid and the underneath piece in felt which has fusible webbing applied. I've removed the paper. Now the fusible webbing is just for strength and it keeps those edges nice and clean. It stops them getting too fluffy. And you can see that there's a mark that I've given you on your pattern template that gives you that hole that's ready for the shank of your eye your safety eye or your teddy bear eye to go through there and it's on the lower side of that circle the reason why I put white underneath is obvious it's because I've got a very dark colored face and putting that green eye on there would just get completely lost so we need something underneath it to show that up so there again might be different for you you might not be making a black sheep just do what suits you but if you want to do this uh, little eye what you need to do is take that top piece and we're going to be adding it to the top larger part so the lower edge where the hole is is the bottom the top part we need to be adding this eyelid so I've got my single strand of extra strong thread I'm going to come in from behind so I can hide that knot and I'm going to come out just right on the edge there where that stitch will start 
I'm going to sew a simple tiny blanket stitch which means taking my needle through all of the layers and pulling my needle through the loop. Now what you're going to have to do is because this is the eyelid is made a little bit larger than the the eye circle because we need a little bit of room for that safety eye to fit in there so you need to pull it in and ease that in as you stitch it's very simple to do make sure that you're rotating your work you're keeping all of those stitches nice and even and each time your threads coming through the loop I do have a video that shows you how to sew the blanket stitch I will put that link at the top there for you for you to have a look a bit tricky to see on the black here but I'm just going to get that eyelid stitched into place so that it looks just like this one and then that's got that lovely little eye pocket for us to slip that eye into and then we could if if it is a safety eye we will go ahead and add it now once this is all sewn up and ready to go what you'll need to do if you're using safety eyes you're going to have to temporarily stuff that head so do a quick stuff of that head get your eye placement correct put your marks in pull your stuffing out and then add your safety eyes in the same way you normally would by adding the clamp on the back because I'm not doing that I'm using my teddy bear eyes I'm going to add those later so let me just get that eye finished and we will be ready to start filling that head so now I can go ahead and start filling this head because I've got those two eyes done and I'm going to largely stuff this head with my fingers because I can get right in there at the front and I do want to pack this head nice and firm it doesn't matter how snugly you want to make the body but for that head to show that lovely defined shape we're going to need to pack it nice and firm to push everything out and that will also lift up that top of the head and give us that nice defined top knot at the top there as you go you can be using your wool felting needle if you have one to go ahead and pack all of that stuffing in we're going to fill right up almost to the neck edge and pack all of your filling in so you've got a nice flat surface ready for that disc to go in I'll show you how that looks when I get to there so there you can see that head is beautifully filled do make sure you fill out those front curves there and the front section here because we're going to be pulling that in with the mouth a little and I've gone ahead and packed that base nice and flat with my wool felting needle that's ready for that neck joint then I have taken a double strand of extra strong thread a long one and I have sewn a running stitch around that whole neck edge just about five millimeters in from the edge tied my first knot there because I've left my tail ends hanging and now I can just slip that joint into place pull on those threads and we're going to pull that in as tight as we can around that bolt there right in and then knot that off at least four times so now that everything's stuffed and that neck bolt is in I've just used my eye placer pins there to determine where my eyes would be now if you're using safety eyes your those would already be in there and secured so for now I'm just going to have those sitting there now what I'm going to do now is just sew in that really simple nose and mouth section and it is I have got a double strand a long double strand of pearl thread I'm using eight ply in this case and of course the pink so that it will show up I've got a knot in the end and I'm just going to come in on the underneath here just and bring my needle out then I will go back into that same hole and I'm going to come out at the lower mark for my lip line now you probably can't see that but you've got one two three four five six marks it's the lower mark that I'm coming out of here first now as far as that placement goes be guided 
by your, you know, follow your own judgment. You, your seams may be different to mine. So make sure that those dots are in the right place. Don't be afraid to adjust them if they're not. So I'm going to come out right on that lower mark there with my needle. And I'm going to pull that through. And I'm going to travel straight up to the next mark which isn't far up we don't have a very long top lip I'm going to take my needle in there and then I'm going to come out at the mark at the side here which will create the top part the V shape of that nose as you pull this thread through you want to make sure that those lip threads aren't twisted so check that they're nice and straight and then we're going to travel down and we're going to go underneath those first two stitches with our needle just the stitches we're not taking any fabric here just sliding underneath them and again we want to make sure that these threads aren't twisted as they go in underneath those first ones there we're going to give that a nice tug then we can go in the opposite side now I'm, I'm pulling that in quite taut because I want a certain amount of tension there I'm going to dive in at this side at the other mark then I'm going to come out at the side mark ready for the first half of that smile bring that one all the way through and again make sure that those threads aren't twisted as they go in pull on that nice and firm make sure everything's nice and even And then we're going to do the same thing we're going to take our needle under those threads again and also again making sure that the threads aren't twisted as they come up to travel underneath again keeping up that tension then we're going to dive into that final spot and exit out the base of the head here make yourself a knot and then you'll have that perfect little nose and mouth so there we go and that has that beautiful sweet little nose and mouth and it is very simple but it's very much in keeping with that whole um, very animated design so and I'm also showing you there that eye placement as I said if you have safety eyes yours will already be in I will just be adding mine now but that shows you that eye placement again in keeping with the design the eyes close together is a, it's a really cute little animated look so that's how that's going to look I just need to add those and very very sweet if you spread them apart it's just not right for the design so I'm just going to get those put into place and then we can go ahead and attach that head to the body there we go so there you can see that has that little head completed my eyes in place and we're ready to add to the body if you want to pin those ears down a little you can just throw a couple of stitches in the side of the head that will just squeeze them down just a fraction that's what I've done I like them sitting closest to their head rather than lifting out so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to add this head to the body and we're going to do that straight through that hole that we've left in that neckline there push that all the way through making sure that we've pressed all of those fibers down around that bolt we're going to add our corresponding disc then our washer and then that nut which I will initially just finger tighten to check everything's in place and also make sure I've got nothing caught up there 
in between all those layers and those discs. Finger tighten that, have a look at that, make sure everything's as it should be. Then you can go ahead, tighten that nut. Not too tight that you can't turn that head because you want a bit of posability there. And then I will go ahead and just put a drop of super glue in the thread of that nut so it will never come adrift. With that head in place now, we can go ahead and fill that body. Now you can keep that as squishy as you like. I'm going to add a little bit of weight. So I've just put in tied up in a stocking some fine aquarium gravel. Of course, you need to be aware if you're making it for a very small child that um, that's probably not suitable. You could also get plastic pellets. Um, but remember, children under the age of three, they're really not suitable for, so just use your polyester filling. So I will add some filling to the base of that before I drop that in there. Mine is just going to be a shelf sample. It's just going to be sitting on a shelf, not actively played with. So I want him to sit well. I also make sure that all this neck area is really well packed out. But you can leave the body section quite soft and squishy if you like for, for cuddling. Um, so I'm going to get that one all filled up. Then we'll come back and close that opening. So here we are with our nicely filled body and I'm ready to close that back opening. Now what you want to do is take your wool felting needle. Make sure that you've got that filling all out of your way. You can take your very sharp little fine tip scissors and just trim the very excess off of the edge there. Don't take too much away of that Sherpa. And then we can go ahead and start our closing. Now this is a ladder stitch that we use to close this. I do have a video on Pay It Forward which might be a lot easier for you to follow. Um, I will put the link at the top there for you. It's a bit hard to see working in the Sherpa, but we're going to start where that seam opens out. I've got a single strand of extra strong thread, a matching thread, a big pile of knots at the end. I'm going to come up on this side of where that seam just starts to open out. In at the seam allowance. Pull that one through. Then we're going to travel across to the other side parallel straight across we're going to dive in and travel down the length of one stitch so now we've got a stitch going across now we're going to come back to where we started and we're going to find that entry position where we went in and from there we're going to travel down one stitch just as we did on the other side. And if I give that a tug, you can see it's going to pull that opening closed. I travel back across to the other side each time I'm going into the exit hole. Travelling down the length of one stitch. I like to do two stitches and then pull on those threads. Although the Sherpa is, it's hard to see in between the fibres, it's actually very easy to work with when you're closing. So you can see I'm giving that a squeeze, pulling on that thread and it's knitting that together perfectly. You won't ever see that. So just continue down to the bottom. Pop out at the base there, make yourself a knot, dive that needle back in and hide those thread ends there and our little sheep will be done. So here we go and this completes our gorgeous little snuggle sheep. Now I've stolen Oliver's scarf there because it's absolutely perfect for him. The colours are spot on for his eyes. Stay with that nice softness throughout. Polar fleece scarves are so simple to make. And they're just really lovely with the whole cuddly texture. Of course, so many ways to change up that face and be creative. You may want to add a whole lot more detail. Remember that I've made him as a child's cuddly toy, so kept it very, very simple. Some nice squishiness in that body there, and I'm sure that he will make the best little sleepy time companion. Um, 
you can also leave off those eyelids if you want a brighter eye. I like the idea of him being a little bed buddy and I just think he's super cute. I think he's very quick to make. Now, if you're enjoying the Sherpa, which I definitely am, remember to check out my beautiful blue Sherpa bear. And of course, you've got all of the PVA details there. This collection is going to keep on growing. They're all going to be based on being child friendly, super easy to make and simple in design. So I hope you've enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing all of your colorful sheep. So thank you all for joining me today and I hope you've enjoyed seeing my little sheep come together. If you have enjoyed this video, you could give me a thumbs up. That would be absolutely beaut. If you haven't joined our Facebook page, please come along and do so. It's a whole great big bunch of us making up my creations from Pay It Forward and Masterclass. And you can see what everybody else is doing. Thank you to everybody who's already joined. I'm, I'm loving seeing everything that you're doing. Also, if you want to step up in your skills, you could come along and join my Masterclass where we make some more advanced projects. I will also put that link down below for you and some incredible things we're seeing come out of Masterclass. I'm absolutely overwhelmed. I'm, it's the best part of my day to see when, uh, when all of you are creating things that you're proud of. It's so important. Um, I do ask that you continue to share, share your creations on your, um, with your friends, family and other creative friends and also your other sewing sites. Let's bring everybody in and uh, we can pay it forward to more people with these free patterns and projects. So I'm actually really looking forward to seeing some bright pink sheep and bright purple sheep. Um, I think it would work, this pattern would work really well in other Sherpa colours. Now speaking of the Sherpa, I have seen on the Facebook page that a few of you are having trouble finding the right Sherpa. I promise I'm doing a video on Sherpa and its properties and how to use that PVA mix and also a talk about synthetic fur coming up and how to handle it or not handle it. Um, but I promise I have that video coming up for you, so check that out. Do be careful with your Sherpa, it needs to be quite a solid fabric. So um, look forward to that. Everybody keep on being creative. Um, thank you for sharing with me and supporting me and have a great week everyone and make sure you pay all those good things forward. Until next time, it is Huru from me.